From New York City, the makers of Clipper Craft Clothes for Men and more than 1,200 leading retail stores from coast to coast present that immortal character created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes, starring John Stanley. This week's story, The Adventure of the Curious Crypt. Holmes, it, you know, it's cold down here in this tomb. Black as pitch. Can't see a thing. Quick, what's in the lantern? Just look about and see if... Holmes, listen. Someone's walking on the roof of the tomb. Yes, Watson. We have a visitor. And he's opening the crypt door. We're at the door of Dr. John Watson's study, and we're about to hear another of his adventures with the fabulous Sherlock Holmes. Well, good evening, Mr. Harris. <laughs> come in, come in. Thank you. Good evening, Dr. Watson. What memoir are you compiling tonight, sir? Well, tonight, Mr. Harris... I am hard at work on an adventure that is outstanding among my memoirs for sheer terror. To recall it even now makes my flesh creep. My old friend Holmes always refers to it as the adventure of the curious crypt. And after you acquaint our audience with the facts on Clippercroft clothes, Mr. Harris, I shall proceed with this remarkable story. Thank you, Doctor. Some hot, sticky morning, you gratefully put on your Clippercraft summer suit. You are comfortable all day long. And that evening, people remark... How nice and cool you look. And you do, because your Clippercraft lightweight suit retains its smart appearance long after other suits are heat crumpled and sagging. Clippercraft suits stand up so amazingly well because they're fashioned by master tailors from fine selected fabrics of porous weaves that are designed to keep you cool. And you pay very little for all that extra quality. Only thirty-three seventy-five to forty-two fifty for a tropical weight Clippercraft summer suit. You save through the unique Clippercraft plan, whereby more than 1,200 independent merchants from coast to coast pool their tremendous buying power. You get the benefit. Wear a Clippercraft summer suit. Look much better, feel much better, and save real money. And now, Dr. Watson. What about the adventure of the curious crypt? Well, Mr. Harris, it began in the summer of 1899. This was a decade when fortunes were being made in the new world by enterprising Englishmen. And among the new rich was a man named John Gibbon. Strange and eccentric man, this Gibbon. Not without a rather shady reputation. He returned to England to retire with his son Cedric and his daughter Ellen. And it was said that the children hated their father bitterly. The London newspapers had dubbed Gibbon Silver John, since he had a distrust of paper money in the banks. And the rumor was that his fortune was a vast hoard of silver dollars, concealed somewhere in his house. Then one night in the cellar of the Gibbon Manor... It's around here somewhere. Money's buried somewhere and I... Cedric... Cedric, answer me. Oh, oh, you're digging in the cellar again, eh? <laughs> you stupid young fool. Father, I, I'm trying to find my money, eh? Trying to rob you, young whelp. I've begged you for an allowance, Father. Even a loan. Yes, well, you'll rot before you get a penny, do you hear? I spent hard years in Canada, risked my life to make my fortune. I know. I, I know all about it. And if it. you think I'm going to let a dissolute son and an extravagant daughter bleed me into bankruptcy, you're wrong. I see. You spent a fortune just for that mausoleum of yours at Kensington Cemetery with your statue on top of it. And yet not one penny for your, for your own daughter and son. My daughter and son? You want nothing from me but my silver dollars. Nothing. But you'll not get them. Not even after I've gone. Why, you... Contemptible old blackguard. <laughs> you rotten miser. Cedric, what? I ought to choke the life from you. Cedric, curl I, my hands around this, your scrawny neck no, like this. No, no, don't. It's murder, do you hear? Murder. Help. Help. Cedric. Father. What are you doing? Cedric, stop it. Stop, let go. He's cut let us go. off without a penny, Ellen. He deserves to die. Cedric, don't. You're mad. Just... Let him go. Please, please, All let right, him go. I'll let him go. I'll let him go. But the next time, 
I'll kill him. As heaven's my witness, I'll kill him. Get out. Get out, you young whelp. Get out of my house before I call the police. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson, that's the story. The whole story. My father and brother had this awful quarrel in the cellar. And now... Now your father's disappeared, eh, Miss Gibbon? Yes. He's vanished completely. Hmm. Interesting, very. You have no idea of your brother Cedric's whereabouts? No, Mr. Holmes. Not since my father ordered him out of the house. I see. Why did you come here to Baker Street, Miss Gibbon? Why didn't you go to the police? Because this is a family matter. The newspapers, they'd be unmerciful, Mr. Holmes. Besides, my brother Cedric... Well, he might be involved in... Murder, Miss Gibbons? Yes. Yes, murder. Yes, certainly, Holmes. The young man might have been desperate enough to yes, have done... Yes, quite, Watson, quite. Now then, Miss Gibbon, let us review the facts. Your father, John Gibbon, made a fortune in ranching properties in Western Canada. He was a partner of a brother, Hugo Gibbon. Yes, that's right. Do you recall him, Miss Gibbon? Uncle Hugo? No, Dr. Watson. Both Cedric and I were too young to remember anything. I see. To continue, <clears throat> your father cheated Hugo out of his share of the ranching properties, drove Hugo into bankruptcy, and then finally disappeared. Yes, Mr. Holmes. Mm -hmm. I... Will you help me find my father and brother? You can count on me, Miss Gibbon. I find this situation rather bizarre, and hence much to my liking. <laughs> Open the door, caretaker. What is it? What do you want? I want to get into the cemetery. Unlock the gate. Sorry, sir, it's past midnight. We don't allow visitors in Kensington Cemetery after dark. Look here, caretaker. I, I just want to look at my father's tomb. My name's Gibbon. Cedric Gibbon. Gibbon? That's right. And uh, there's a quid in it for you, if you'll do what I say. Well, can't see any harm in it if you just want to look. Come along. That's it. My father's tomb, curse him. There's his statue on the roof. Egotistical old fool out. <laughs> no. No. Welcome to Kensington Graveyard, Sidney. No, please. <laughs> Don't. Morning Telegraph? No, I haven't, Watson. What is it? Uh, Cedric Gibbon. He was seen last night. Indeed? Where? As he entered the Kensington Cemetery shortly after midnight. And he never came out again. The cabbie who drove him there, the caretaker Malsby who admitted him, both identified young Gibbon. That isn't the end of this devilish business. What else is there? Well, both the cabbie and caretaker swore they heard Gibbon scream. After that, a kind of wild and weird laughter coming from the graveyard. I see. And, of course, the police have already blundered into this case. Yes, they have. They searched the cemetery and found nothing except for Gibbon's footprints. And, well, my Joe. Well, what is it? Well, according to this newspaper account, the footprints ended abruptly on the cemetery road, as though Gibbon had been picked up by some... Watson, get your hat and stick. Must be off to Kensington Cemetery at once. <laughs> Watson, Gibbons' his footprints are quite clear here on the cemetery road. Luckily, the road's damp from the recent rain. Oh, Dr. Holmes, this whole thing has a touch of the supernatural, ghouls and all that sort of thing. Who do you think did that weird laugh? We shall find out in good time, my dear fellow, I assure you. And... Uh -huh. What is it, Holmes? Note, Watson, observe. The footprints. Joe, that story in the telegraph is accurate. The prints do end abruptly. Not quite, Watson, not quite. Eh? What do you mean? Look, 
The earth has been scraped to the side of the prince and into the grass as though Gibbons' shoes had dragged. Yes, so it appears, so it appears, but what... Observe, too, that these prints terminate less than 25 feet from the mausoleum of John Gibbons. Is that significant? Very. Yes, but why, Holmes? What did you say? Later, Watson, later. At this moment, I should like to examine the roof of the tomb. The roof so jealously guarded by that marble image of the eccentric millionaire, John Gibbon. Well, Holmes, I don't see anything up here on the roof. Don't you, Watson? Then you're obviously in need of spectacles. There are definite scratches on the polished stone surface of this crypt roof. Yes, Joe, you're right, Holmes. And what's more, they lead to this tightly locked door. Come, Watson, let's be off. Where to, Holmes? First, a talk with a caretaker, Moresby. And then we shall return to this crypt later. You see, I'm convinced that this tomb contains some devilish and macabre secret, Watson. And I propose to enter it tonight. <laughs> Here's a message from the fine, independent local merchant who sells you Clippercraft clothes. He points out that there's so much difference between an ordinary suit and one that has been scientifically designed for summer wear. And that's precisely what you get in a Clippercraft summer suit. Clippercraft master tailoring, plus the finest of summer fabrics, woven with millions of tiny windows to keep you cool. Every Clippercraft suit and sport jacket. There's the Clippercraft label, that famous trademark derived from the staunch clipper ships that established honest New England quality everywhere in the world. Clippercraft lightweight suits at only thirty-three seventy-five to forty-two fifty give you remarkable value. Yes, this summer, just as all the year round, you can always rely on Clippercraft suits and the fine local independent stores that proudly sell them. That's why men who know insist on Clippercraft clothes bearing the Clippercraft label. So be sure to visit the Clippercraft store in your city. These leading stores in the metropolitan area are proud to add their names to Clippercraft in your suits, sport jackets, and tropicals. In Manhattan, John Wanamaker Men's Stores, Broadway at 8th and 67 Liberty Street, Saks 34th, Broadway at 34th, in Brooklyn, Abram and Strauss, in Newark, New Jersey, Boulevard Men's Shop, Kresge, Newark, and in Jamaica, the B&B Clothes Shop, 16408, Jamaica Avenue. And now, Dr. Watson. Dr. Watson, you were relating to us the adventure of the curious crypt. Yes, so I was, Mr. Harris. So I was. As you recall, both John Gibbon and his son Cedric had vanished under strange circumstances. And at Kensington Cemetery, Holmes had conducted a thorough investigation, expressed his intention to return and enter the crypt that night. At any rate, as we came out, we stopped in at the cottage of the cemetery caretaker, Molesby. You heard a scream, Molesby, and then a kind of wild laughter. Is that correct? Yes, Mr. Holmes. It was terrible, terrible. Enough to chill a man's blood. Yes, I see. A question, Molesby. Yes, sir? The rules on the entrance sign state specifically that no visitors are allowed in Kensington Cemetery after dark. How does it happen that you admitted Gibbon through the gate? Well, Mr. Holmes, he was John Gibbon's son. And the old gentleman's an important person here, so to speak. Built the biggest tomb in the graveyard. I couldn't very well refuse his son. And as he said, he only wanted to take a look at his father's tomb. It didn't strike you strange that he wanted to view the crypt in the dead of night? Well, no, sir. We got some pretty queer customers visiting the cemetery. Yes, I see. One more question, Walsby. Have you ever met John Gibbon? The old gentleman? Yes. No, Mr. Holmes. I've only been here a month or two. The only part of Mr. Gibbon I've met is that stone statue of him on the crypt roof. I see. Well, Moresby, at the moment, there's no more information we require. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Come, Watson, we'll be off. Well, uh, Holmes, afraid we didn't find out much there. Oh, on the contrary, Watson, we did. Eh? What? Surely you noticed that Moresby was slightly bow-legged. Bow-legged? Hmm. Almost what the juice was... Moreover, there? his eyes were watery blue and squinted. Well, I should all suppose they did. What's a man's eyes and legs got to do with it? Many details, Watson. Perhaps significant, perhaps irrelevant. I... Uh-huh. What is it, Holmes? Look here on the path, Watson. A silver dollar. Yes, so it is, so it is. What is that? Rather unusual, don't you think, Watson, to find a silver dollar lying on the ground outside an English cemetery? I suppose it is. Yes, quite. 
I'm beginning to see the pattern here of a devilish and ingenious plot. When we return to the graveyard here tonight, I hope to unearth the last few missing threads. Watson, we're in luck tonight. Indeed? How? It's enough moonlight for clear observation. Observe that massive marble building just on the other side of that deep hollow ahead. Yes, the Gibbon tomb. The infernal statue of old John Gibbon standing on the roof. <laughs> I must say the juicy thing looks almost alive there. Watson. Uh, yes, sir? I believe I just saw the statue move. Move? Yes, it raised its arm and turned its head toward us. Well, Holmes, you must be mistaken. That statue of John Gibbon is made of stone. It can't move. <laughs> Good Lord, what was that? The statue. It's laughing, Watson. Joe, Holmes, you're right. Look at it. It's running across the mausoleum roof. Holmes, this is incredible, incredible. My eyes must be playing tricks on me. I... It's jumped off the tomb roof. It's running across the graveyard. Quick, Watson, after it. <laughs> We lost sight of it. We ran down into that hollow. It came up the hill here. Yes, and the roof is empty now. Yes, but how could a stone statue run and laugh like a maniac, eh? Obviously, the statue was human. Come, let's get up on the crypt roof. Here, I'll give you a hand. Yes. Right, Holmes. Now, Watson, note this supporting pin on which the statue stood. Observe how shiny it is. What does that mean, Holmes? It means that the real statue, the stone figure, has been removed from this supporting pin and carried away. If I don't miss my guess, it's in the interior of the crypt. And our next step is to force open this metal crypt door. I... Oh, it's open. Yes. Someone's been here before us. Perhaps he... Perhaps the thing is inside the tomb now, eh? Yes, perhaps. Obviously, the only way to find out is to enter the tomb and see for ourselves. You have your pistol handy? Yes, Good. yes, I have. Good. Then let's proceed down these stone steps. Holmes. Why haven't you started down the stairs? I'll be with you in a second, Watson. But first, I... Holmes, what the deuce are you doing up there? Merely closing the crypt door behind us. Now then, let's go down. We can use your dark lantern now yeah. and... What the deuce, Holmes? Quick, Watson, the lantern. Yes. Hold it up. Uh-huh. Observe, the stone statue was lying on these stairs and you kicked it down. And by its sound, it's a hollow affair, probably a marble surface over a plaster base, and easy enough for a strong man to lift. Now, suppose we go down to the crypt itself. Holmes, the place seems to be empty. Oh, on the contrary, Watson. Look in the corner. Good Lord. The... Precisely. Two bodies. One, John Gibbon, the other, his son, Cedric. The marks on the neck have been strangled. Yes, they have indeed, in a fiendish and unique way, I might add. I... What is it, Holmes? There's a silver casket here on this raised platform. Another whim of the eccentric old gentleman, John Gibbon. Holmes, you're not going to open it? I am indeed. Holmes, good heavens. Yes, Watson, as you see, it's full of silver dollars and... Watson, listen. Yes, footsteps on the crypt roof. Quite. We have a visitor. The fiendish killer. Quick, out with that lantern. Good evening, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson. I left the crypt door open for you. You walked right in, you fools. You walked right in. Holmes, who is it? Who? It's quite obvious, Watson. This man is Hugo Gibbon, alias Smallsby, the caretaker. Hugo Gibbon? Precisely, the brother of old John Gibbon and his former partner. Yes, Mr. Holmes, you are very clever. I am Hugo Gibbon. That cursed brother of mine robbed me, cheated me, ruined me, sent me to an asylum. But I escaped. I escaped. I came back. Yes, you came back and discovered that John Gibbon hid his fortune in his own mausoleum. You gained employment here, saw him come to the tomb and posed as the statue. In the dark, he was unaware that you were alive. Then when he walked underneath, you lassoed him and strangled him. Go on, Mr. Holmes. Go on. You are right. You did the same to his son, Cedric, who finally suspected that his father's wealth was buried here. You took the crypt door key from old John's pocket, hid both bodies here, and started to carry the silver dollars out. Yes, Mr. Holmes, you are very clever, but it won't do you any good, because I'm going to lock you both in this crypt, bury you alive, and when you're both dead, I'll come back with the rest of the money in the casket. 
Cozy, he's got us trapped. Good night, Mr. Holmes. Dr. Watson, good night and pleasant dreams. <laughs> Quick, Watson, have your pistol ready and after him up the stairs. Hurry. The tomb door, it's locked. Oh, no, it's not. I smashed the lock before we entered. Watson, there's Hugo Gibbon running through the cemetery in the moonlight. Quick, fire your pistol. Good shooting, Watson. You got him. Well, Watson, our man Hugo Gibbon is safely in the custody of Scotland Yard. Your shot was not fatal, but he will pay his debt to the Crown. No, it, it seems incredible, Holmes. So Gibbon, alias Malsby, hid the real statue in the crypt, posed on the roof himself, and lassoed his unsuspecting victims, eh? Exactly. You will recall how the footsteps ended, but the marks on the grass indicated that something had been dragged across it. Hugo simply hauled in his rope with his strangling victim on the end of it. But how did you know Malsby was actually Gibbon? Oh, it's obvious, Watson. Only a man who'd lived in the West could cultivate such skill with a lasso. And the caretaker I knew immediately was a Westerner. But how? His legs were bowed, a characteristic symptom of long hours in the saddle. Then, too, his eyes squinted, another trait of ranchers used to staring at far-off horizons. Naturally, I thought immediately of John Gibbon's brother and old ranching partner, Hugo. And the silver dollar you found near the cottage convinced you that he had robbed the tomb? Quite. <laughs> you know, Holmes, I must congratulate you. I've never seen you conduct a more brilliant investigation. Thank you, Watson. I am, as you know, fundamentally a man of modesty. Shall we merely call it extraordinary? Let it go at that. Well, Dr. Watson, that was quite an adventure. Yes, sir. It was indeed, Mr. Harris. And I might add that the police, at Holmes's suggestion, excavated the caretaker's yard and discovered some 200,000 silver dollars buried there, most of which had come from deep recesses in the walls of the Gibbon Crypt. Why, a fortune in those days, Dr. Watson. Yes. And now, what about next week's adventure? Next week, Mr. Harris, I shall relate to you the adventure of the Red Death. It concerns a bottle of laundry ink, a vengeful sea captain, and what was probably the greatest threat to the population of London in that decade. Makers of Clipper Craft Clothes and more than 1,200 stores from coast to coast have brought you another in the new series of broadcasts featuring the world's most famous detective, Sherlock Holmes. Our stories are based upon the character Sherlock Holmes, created by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Sherlock Holmes is played by John Stanley, Dr. Watson by George Spelvin. This week's story was written by Max Ehrlich with special music by Albert Berman. If you don't know your Clippercraft dealer, write Clippercraft, 200 Fifth Avenue, New York City. Be sure to listen next week to Sherlock Holmes in The Adventure of the Red Dead. This is Cy Harris speaking for Clipper Craft Clothes. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.